Hello, hello, and welcome back to Storytime here on build a bear Radio. I'm your host, Victoria, sitting here today with Floppity Bunny. And we're excited because we have some really wonderful Halloween stories to share with you. We're going to start with a picture book, Eeny Meeny Halloweeny, being read to us by its author, Susan Eady. Hello, Susan. Hi, my name is Susan Eady, and I'm the author of the picture book, Eeny Meeny Halloweeny, published by Harper Children's and illustrated by Lucy Fleming. You can find Eeny Meeny Halloweeny at your favorite independent bookstore or at any online book tra- retailers. I was inspired to write Eeny Meeny Halloweeny because I always loved making my own Halloween costumes. I much prefer making things for myself rather than buying them ready-made. And it's so good for the environment to reuse materials that you already have on hand. So let's see what the girl in this book decides to make for herself. Eeny Meeny Halloweeny, written by Susan Eady and illustrated by Lucy Fleming. Eeny Meeny Halloweeny, kitty, bat, or snake? Perhaps a bear. I might just wear a costume that I make. I have some tights and turtlenecks, some headbands, tape and glue. My dress up trunk is full of things that I can try on too. A penguin would be fun to make. Dressed up in blacks and whites, I'd put on daddy's tux and shirt and wear my orange tights. Or what about an elephant? I could be one of those with pillowcases for my ears. A sock could be my nose. Eeny meeny Halloweeny pig or chimpanzee. A sweater and a mask would make a monkey out of me. This fuzzy wuzzy coat could be the perfect thing to wear. With paper ears, I'd turn into a big pink polar bear. Rawr. I might just be a turtle with my shell shaped like a dome. The laundry basket that I'd wear would be my mobile home. Or I could be a little snail. His neck is long and skinny. A blanket roll could be my shell. Pipe cleaners for antennae. A rhino or an ocelot. Giraffe or kangaroo. Eeny, meeny, halloweeny. I know what to do. At last, it's here. It's Halloween. I'll shout out, trick or treat. My candy sack is big because my wild things have to eat. Thank you, Susan. Now, Floppity Bunny and I might need Eeny Weeny Halloweeny to help us pick our own way through the next story. This is one of those marvelous books where you get to choose for yourself how the adventure is going to fall out. And today we're going to hear about it from its author, Lauren Magaziner. She's going to tell us about her book, Case Closed, The Haunting at the Hotel. Hello, Lauren. Hi, my name is Lauren Magaziner, and I'm the author of the Case Closed series, a puzzle-packed, interactive, pick-your-own-path mystery series for middle grade readers. Today, I'll be reading from Case Closed, Haunting at the Hotel, which is about a ghost haunting in a lodge on a mountaintop in the middle of an icy blizzard. You're not afraid of ghosts, are you? (laughs) Good. Case Closed, Haunting at the Hotel can be purchased at your local independent bookstore. You can also find Haunting at the Hotel on harpercollins.com, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, basically wherever books are sold. This book is a little unconventional. 
You don't read it in order. Each choice you make will tell you which page number to turn to, so you hop around. I'm going to start my read on page 426. Because this book requires you to make choices, I'll be making the decisions for us this time. But if you want to take a different path than the one I've chosen, I encourage you to take a solo journey into the haunted hotel. For now, let's venture together. Ow! We set the alarm for 3 a.m., but this noise is not our alarm. It's the sound of a howl. I want to get up, but I can't move from under the covers. It's so cold. The type of cold where I need to curl up. C -c Carlos, Eliza says between chattering teeth. Something's wrong. I can hear her shuffling, and I don't understand how she has the energy to get out of bed when all I can do is breathe hot air into my hands. The thermostat says it's f 41 degrees, Eliza says. Dangerously cold. Get up, Carlos. She puts a cold hand on my ankle and yanks. We have to get out of here. Ah, What's that? I shiver. Let's go. She pulls me into a sitting position and I roll out of bed. She pushes me into the hallway. The warm air hits me in a rush and it's like my brain suddenly wakes up. Eliza, what happened? The temperature in our room dropped. Do you think it broke? She gives me a dark look. Someone wanted us to freeze, I say. I knock on Mom and Frank's door for a solid 30 seconds, but there's no answer. I try the walkie-talkie. Come in, Mom, I say. Are you in your room? Over. Carlos, I'm... Scorch. Luther, snowstorm, you were here. Scorch. You're cutting out, Mom, I say. My heart is thudding. Are Mom and Frank in danger? I already felt so much pressure to prove myself as a junior detective, and now I feel like everything is falling on my shoulders. Mom! Frank! Scooch! I look at Eliza. The snowstorm must be messing with the radio signals, she says. Ow! Comes the howling again. I ignore it as I look down at the walkie-talkie. This thing sounds like a dying robot. I try to chuckle, but it comes out hollow. With Mom and Frank, who knows where, it feels like our solid team of four is being whittled away. Maybe it's coincidence that they've been separated from us, but it feels menacing. <laughs> the sound echoes down the hallway. What is that? I whisper, even though I know exactly what that was. Maniacal laughter. Eliza takes a deep breath. Okay, do we follow the sound of the laughter or the sound of the howling? I look to Eliza for guidance and she grimaces. You, be you pick between the laughter and the howling, she says, because honestly, I'm not optimistic about either one right now. I feel frozen from the inside out. Mom and Frank might need me and Eliza and I may be in trouble. Usually, this is where my brain starts worrying. But for some reason, the only thing I feel now is fear. Carlos? This ghost, it's ruining my detective skills. I have to prove to Mom that I'm worthy of being here. But right now, I have no gut instincts. I just feel scared. Eliza grabs my hand. I'm scared too, Carlos. But you are putting too much pressure on yourself. You can make this decision. I'm right here with you. We can follow the laughter or we can follow the howling. So today we are gonna follow the howling. Ow! The howling echoes throughout the lodge. I'm going to find its source. Eliza and I make our way down the stairs. The front doors to the lodge are wide open only in the storm, snow is flying into the lobby and light from the lobby is spilling out into the fresh powder. The sound comes again and it's clearly from outside. Then, there, a long shadow appears in the snow, one with a huge mass, furry and monstrous. The bear, I shout. It turns and looks at me with a long snout, dripping drool, fangs bared. 
it is not a bear. It's a dog. The biggest dog I have ever seen. It snarls at us. Shut it, I shout, trying to close the double doors before the monster gets loose in the lodge. But they are not budging. There's a sizable snowbank in the lobby now that's blocking the doors from shutting. The shadow moves into the hotel. I can hear the low-pitched growl so close to me that it's practically rumbling in my ear. Run, I mouth at Eliza. But our run is a tiptoe, a slow, quiet retreat into darkness so that the bear dog doesn't hear us. We can't make it up the stairs. Our only chance is the fire den. Quick, this way, says a voice behind us. January, the hotel owner's daughter. Thank goodness. At the sound of her voice, the, dark, the, the dog charges toward us. But we slip inside the den and shut the doors, just in time to hear the dog collide with the wood. Its barks are deep and guttural. It scratches the door, eager to get in. Then, suddenly, it stops. No more howls, no more snarls, no more scratching, no more maniacal laughter from some distant corner of the house. Just silence. The quiet might be even creepier than the growling. What was that? January says, holding her heart and panting. What is it doing in my family's hotel? So we can ask January what she's doing awake, or we can stop the dog from attacking someone else. We are going to stop the dog from attacking someone else. We have to go looking for the dog, I say before it attacks someone else. January nods and cautiously opens the door. The lobby is empty and cold. The front double doors are still open with wind flinging snow inside. Snowbanks are piled high inside the lodge. January runs across the lobby, right toward the staircase. Come on, she calls to us. But Eliza and I are taking it slower, elbows linked. The lights flicker. For a second, I see nothing. Then, there, right behind January. The ghost has no features on its face, just a round black circle where a mouth would be, and two round black circles for eyes. Empty, soulless, black pits. Its body is bent in the wrong shape. Clawed hands reach out. January, look behind! It grabs her and she shrieks. The thing drags her backward up the stairs as January cries, help, please. We run after her. When we get to the top of the stairs, the monstrous ghost thing is halfway down the hall with January. It's crawling backwards, arms and legs spider-like. January reaches out to us. Behind January, behind the ghost, the door to the dead room is wide open. My blood runs cold. Kicking and struggling, January is being dragged inside. Thank you so much for listening to Case Closed Haunting at the Hotel. I hope you feel ready to tackle the rest of the case. Good luck, detective. Well, Floppity Bunny and I are definitely ready to go and rescue January from that horrible ghost thing. I know what we'll be doing for the rest of the afternoon, but it's time for me, Victoria, and Floppity Bunny here with me to say goodbye from Storytime here on Builder Bear Radio. Until next week, when we'll tune in for some more exciting Halloween story adventures together. Goodbye.